Welcome to seasonal checklist, to-do list, heads up list, what to look out for list. All of these things with regards to being fall, winter, I would say at this point in time. I'm going to combine the two seasons, seeing as we only have a little bit of fall left before officially the winter starts as per the calendar. I understand that most of my observations and tips are directed at those of us that can grow outside for most of the year, but I have enough experience with growing orchids indoors as well, especially when it comes time for mine to be in sheath, in bud, or they are in bloom. So I'm hoping that my observations and my little heads up with regards to the season and what to look out for for your orchids will be of help, regardless if you are in a controlled environment or you are sort of indoor, outdoor grower. Now, as a mainly outdoor grower, I can grow my orchids 80% of the time outside all year round here in southern Spain. The reason we're currently stood in my grow area is because all the orchids that are in bloom or in bud stay inside. That includes all the orchids that shouldn't get too cold because outdoors I can have some nice warm pockets and climates throughout my patio, but I may miss the mark and suddenly a cold chilly wind would come up and that would take out, let's say, my really hot growers like a Sologeny panderata, for example. But we are indoors because all my blooming orchids are now indoors. This is my winter blooming alley. From right to left is my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday, my Procatavola Golden Peacock, the remnants of Dendrobium Hibiki, and there's the Binosa Wabash Valley in the back there. I have others that are in bud. That segues straight into what I want to mention with regards to regardless of what your growing environment is. If you are in this season, you may be opening a window, you may be opening a door from a colder room. Any orchids that are in bud, in sheath, in spike, watch out for the cold drafts. Even though you're aerating with fresh air, you're tilting the window, watch out for that cold draft because it can pose bud blast very, very quickly. It can also cause spikes to stop growing. So that is my first thing. Clearly, we are all here to grow our orchids to bloom. That's why we've got them, amongst other reasons, but mainly the blooms are the satisfaction. So watch out for any temperature changes if you are opening doors or cracking windows open to allow some fresh air to come in, especially if you are a permanently indoor grower, the same for a greenhouse, for example, extractor fans, input fans, and all these things, anything that could be hitting some kind of a little bit of a temperature differential that is a smidgen too much, it will cause bud blast. So the same thing as well, the temperature is a little bit cooler. Outside, indoors, in my case, they are clearly so much cooler than they would ever be in the spring, summer. I still don't have to worry about humidity, so that's a good thing. But what I have to really, really be mindful of, and I just want to point that out to you, is when new sheaths on a growth that is somewhat matured, but not quite, when that growth around the pseudobulb Normally in the spring and summer, we have them dry out very quickly because of the warmer temperatures. But in fall, winter, those membranes, those sheaths will deteriorate because that is the normal cycle of the orchid. So there's nothing wrong with that, but they will be damp. The membrane doesn't dry out because of maybe higher humidity, seeing as the temperatures are lower and you might have a lot of precipitation in your environment. So the membrane around the pseudobulbs will not dry out, will deteriorate. There is a transparency and a wetness about that membrane of that sheath, which could be dangerous for rot, especially because the new growth hasn't quite hardened off yet. And here you have something wrapped around it that has sort of a wet feel to it. So what I do is when I see sheaths like that, even though my growth is still not hardened off, I do peel away that sheath, not entirely because I don't want to risk the tender structure underneath, but away so that there's airflow around the pseudobulb or around the base of the orchid. Humidity levels can be high, humidity levels can be low, that is not the point. If the humidity levels are high with lower temperatures, that is a double trouble. But in my case, I don't have humidity and I still get this wet kind of membrane deteriorating sheath phenomenon. So humidity really doesn't 
make that big a difference. It's more the temperatures, seeing as the sheath cannot dry out. In my case, with my setup, for example, I have self-watering and mainly lecker. Temperature comes into play here as well, but also what is the orchid doing? Be very, very mindful of your watering habits at this point in time. Now is the time to have a really keen eye as to what the orchids are doing on an individual basis because water reservoirs may not deplete as quickly and in organic growing, for example, the pot stays wetter longer. Be mindful of how much you are watering. Orchids in active growth, that happens during this fall winter season. Slower, but they still need fertilizer. So be mindful as well about the quantity of fertilizer you are applying, even though the orchid is in active growth. The natural metabolism of the orchid could switch a little bit and slow down a lot more than what it would be doing in summer. Hence, it will not absorb all the fertilizer that you are applying, meaning salt accumulation in the pot and no amount of flushing you do afterwards is going to get rid of that and that could deteriorate the roots. And then we have a setback orchid as we head into spring. My happy medium is always half of what I would apply in winter if my orchid is in active growth. So that would be for me 160 parts per million. If the orchid is in bloom, then I will stop fertilizing once the buds have opened up because there may or may not be a new growth coming depending on the orchid, especially with species we know they go into sort of a rest mode. I like to call it snooze mode because they kind of wake up and do something and then they go back to snooze mode. They're not entirely resting per se. If you have buds growing, continue to fertilize, but continue still at half of the rate that you would during the summer months. Always take into consideration what is left in your pot, how wet is your media, and in my case, self-watering and lecker. My reservoirs pretty much stay empty if the orchid is in snooze mode. If they are in bloom or in bud, then they get 160 parts per million just to boost those buds and hopefully they will bloom out. After which they get nothing if they're not in active growth. I have a Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga at the moment, pushing out some spikes starting, it's early, early days, but also pushing out new growth. So that one does get 160 parts per million, but again, the reservoir isn't full. I keep the reservoir at half, just to make sure that I'm not drowning out the roots. As I mentioned about humidity earlier, I wanted to give you a pointer with regards to how you are using your heaters, or if you are indoors like myself, not using heaters at all. My climate kind of permits that. It's very, very precarious. It's a little bit dangerous, but I prefer not to use heaters. It's a cost factor in my case. However, if you are using heaters, watch out indoors if you're using radiators. The drop in your humidity level could be so dramatic because of the radiators or the heaters within your home that the orchid itself is not going to fare very, very well. The dehydration by transpiration through the leaves could cause a problem. So make sure that if you're using any of these heaters, even if it is to heat a greenhouse, make sure that you do counteract any drop in humidity by raising the humidity by using either humidity trays or moving the orchid away from the windowsill where you have the heater running. Drop in humidity and very, very dry air will also be a reason for bud blasts or spikes just to frazzle out. So bear that in mind. Humidity needs to somehow be provided regardless if the temperatures are a little bit lower. In my case, my LECA and self-watering setup does the work for me. I do have humidity trays, but the setup itself creates a little bit of a humid microclimate around each orchid. So the humidity from the bottom of the pot sort of evaporates and disperses in and among the leaves of the orchid in question. When I pack my orchids together the way they are right now, especially in the evenings when my outdoor orchids come in, the humidity raises normally, naturally, because of the amount of pots I bring in, and each of them is in lecker and self-watering. That's a lot of humidity, so a setup can counteract dryness, or humidity trays can counteract dryness, or a humidifier. Watch out for the angle of the sun. I know that this is something that we probably already addressed in September. 
However, I would like to bring it up again in this video because it is now coming to the lowest point in the sky and things have changed yet again since September. In my case, in this row space here, I get natural sunlight now filtering in at least four meters, whereas in September, it was a meter and a half. So I have to be careful, especially when it comes to having slipper orchids that suddenly get hit with sun. When they were closer to the window earlier in the season, that was fine because the sun wasn't hitting them. But now I've been pushing them back and back and back gradually as the sun was encroaching into my grow space. Phalaenopsis, the same thing, be they summer bloomers or complex hybrids. If you have them exposed very close to the window and all of a sudden the sun angle is such that it just comes straight into the window, these orchids cannot handle direct sun. You will incur sunburn. You can put a curtain or something to break the intensity of the sun that is coming in. That is definitely an option. You can also increase airflow, but increasing airflow with a fan or open terrace door as such is not going to stop any kind of sunburn on leaves leaves of orchids that cannot handle that sun. Even though we always say the winter sun is weaker than any other time of year, when it comes through glass, it reacts like a magnifying glass on our leaves. So a white curtain will break that down. Airflow alone will not. Don't think that because you've got fans going, everything is fine. You've got a lot of airflow when that sun comes through and pelts down onto the leaves of your orchids, that airflow is just not going to be enough to avoid sunburn. Move them back, put a white curtain, something to break that intense light that could heat up the leaves and cook them. Our orchids are in dormancy, heading to dormancy, not yet dormant, but now is the time to keep an eye out as to who is doing what. I'm talking about the classic winter resters, some dendrobiums, catacetinae, and then there's also some terrestrials that just, you know, frazzle out their leaves, and then they go into rest mode, ready to wake up in spring again. Now is the time to just keep a real close eye on who is doing what in order to react accordingly. In my climate, I have to keep them watered, especially my dendrobiums outside. They get watered on the daily, whether they're snoozing or not. No fertilizer though, if they're snoozing. But because of my setup of LECA and self-watering, I do maintain my pots damp, but I'm not watering per se by adding anything into the reservoir. I will flush the pot through occasionally just to maintain the wicking efficacy of my LECA. I don't want to lose that coming out through into spring and suddenly I'm fighting to keep my orchids hydrated because again, in my climate, and that is something that you might want to be aware of in your climate, how quickly do your temperatures rise? How quickly can your setup react and respond to what the orchids are doing? Or will you be fighting some kind of water repelling media for some time and then you have to water more until the media reacts and retains water? So in my case, because of the LECA and the self-watering, I don't want that to happen, come out in spring. I want to be able to flush my pots through, fill the reservoir, and then we're good to go. And during the winter, even the ones that are showing signs of going dormant, those orchids still get flushed but I just won't fill the reservoir. So keep in mind, what is your collection doing? Which orchids of yours should be heading into dormancy? Are they showing signs? In that case, respond accordingly. They won't be needing any fertilizer anymore. They might need the occasional misting. And that is what I mean when I say I water my orchids, I mist them, but I don't leave them without water. If you have super high humidity, in your growing environment, then more often than not, the winter resters don't need to be watered because the roots will draw moisture from the air and that is fine. I do not have that luxury. I have to provide a little bit of water every single day. And if you're not sure what yours is supposed to be doing, like a catacetinae, watch for the signs of the leaves going yellow and then you know it's time to pipe down. I did a video about that recently, which I will also link in the description below specifically for the catacetinae, but you may have orchids that are out of season. Push the growth. I personally never ever stunt a new growth based on the fact that my calendar says you should be going dormant. If an orchid is out of season, it will be waking up. For the orchid, it is spring, and yet we are in fall, winter. But the orchid itself is waking up. Let it wake up. Treat it as you would if it were spring. 
try and get that growth to some kind of substance and size. It may be that the orchid will recognize after waking up that, oh, hey now, it's a little bit too cool for me out here. This is not what is supposed to be happening. And then it may be that in another two or three months, the orchid is just going to show signs of going dormant again, and you are left with a smaller, immature growth. That is not a problem. It still will be a functioning storage organ for the future of the orchid. It will also, in the cases of cattleyas or oncidiums or other orchids, that storage organ will still produce roots, which is great for the development of the orchid. So don't stun to growth simply because an orchid is like waking up and doesn't know where it is at this point in time. Cultivate that growth and then see what happens. Even if it does stop midway and goes, whoops, I got this one wrong, goes back dormant, it will then wake up again, probably a little bit later in the season, and start another new growth, and you do the same thing until the orchid is acclimated. So reading the signs of your orchids this time of year is paramount and being able to respond accordingly. There's one more point I would like to point out. If you're still here, thank you very, very much. Watch for pests. Just because it is fall, winter, the pests are around. Whatever is happening out in their natural habitat, they don't have that anymore. And they come to our orchids to have an extended buffet. So watch out for mealybugs. Scales start to come up and go, ah, I'm young, but I'll be here. That's fine. I can live here. This is good. The same with aphids. Funny enough, aphids. But they like the environment that we are cultivating our orchids in. So just because it is fall, winter, it doesn't mean the pests are going to go, right, that's it for me until spring. I'm out of here. That is when they will come in and continue to feast on our orchids, especially as our orchids are continuously pushing new growth. And wow, look at that. Happy sap. Woohoo. I'm going to get me some of that. Yeah, watch out for the pests. Don't think that they are not around, enjoying the benefits of the climate and the environment that we are giving our orchids throughout the winter. So I hope that this video was interesting. I hope that it was helpful. If I happen to have missed any points that you as a grower might say, no, but you need to also look out for this, check that, watch out for X, Y, Z, please leave that in the comments below so that everybody can benefit from these additional points and observations and get the maximum out of their orchids, bringing them safe through into the other side of spring. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a very beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.